Okay, here's a little trail guide if you guys ever come to Mount Sydney Boyne. So this is the road we took in from Canmore. Just a little turn off over here uh, to the Mount Shark Road and the trailhead is here. You can park here. And then there's helicopter parking, which is a bit to the left, but we can ignore that for now. Uh, there's two ways up to a Sydney Boyne. First one via a Sydney Boyne Pass, which is over here. And I recommend this route up because it's nice and easy. So flat roads, and there's only one significant uh, area where there's elevation gain and it's right over here. So other than that, very easy to walk on. It's 28 kilometers with 400 meters of elevation gain. And there are several water sources along the way. So you can probably just bring one water bottle and fill up on the way there. There's three campgrounds if you want to split it up into two days. This one here, BR9, Lake Magog Campground, and one more here, forgot the name. Um, the only word of caution here is that these are in Banff National Park, so they have different booking times than um, Magog Lake itself. So just be aware of that. The other route up is through Wonder Pass, and it's this route over here. Now, the reason I don't recommend this on the way up is because in this area over here and this area over here, there are sections where there are a lot of switchbacks. It's very, very steep and you would not want to go up this thing with like a 50 pound bag on your back. Um, so yeah, come down this route, which is what we did. I highly recommend that. Okay, in terms of stuff to do in the actual uh, vicinity of Assiniboine, um, there is obviously the Niblet, Nublet, and Nub Peak. And our campground is here, Lake Magog Campground. And this is the Sinniboyne Huts. And to get there, there are several ways of doing so. There's the long way and very scenic, although very hard. We pass uh, Sunburst Lake. Cerulean Lake and Elizabeth Lake all on the way up and then you can head down and yeah there's other ways of going up like this route here or this route here and this one over here they're all a bit of a detour but you know what too bad there is also Sunburst Peak over here and although the trail map does show there is a trail it's really just route finding. You can pretty much take any path until you get to the very top. So when there's about 100 meters of elevation gain left, I highly recommend you follow the trail map like step for step because there are places where you like can't get up. Um, I took my sick uh, shot of myself standing on that little rocky outcropping over here. Simply take a little detour um, to the left and you will reach that spot. Uh, there is also a little waterfall just below that. And to get to that, you take this trail over here and then you head up the mountain after that. Um, there's also Wonder Peak. So I'm just gonna switch colors. It is over here, that's Wonder Peak. You take this path all the way here. There's a junction, it's like a grizzly bear sign over there. And then you take path up. And if you would like to, you can do a traverse along this uh, mountain range. I did not have time, so I did not do that, unfortunately. Uh, there's also Og Mountain, which is pretty nice, as well as Og Lake. I did not go there myself either, but uh, some of the group members did. And again, a windy road, but too bad. It's, it's a beautiful hike for sure. And if you have time, definitely go there. And yeah, that's, I think that concludes the vast majority of things to do in Mount Assiniboine. I definitely recommend at least like three days to fully explore the area preferably four or five. Six was a little bit too much, 
but there were two rainy days where like it wasn't as pretty so i think six days worked out pretty well for us actually in the end all right let's talk a bit about temperature so we went at the end of august and daytime highs were around 20 yeah 20 degrees celsius and then around zero degrees at night so it was it was pretty chilly i had my sweater and my shell jacket on and it was definitely not enough at night to keep me warm i had to boil water and like shove it inside my coat pocket to keep myself warm uh, i definitely recommend a winter sleeping bag as well as a nice tarp to keep your tent dry because it does get miserable if you're soaking wet at night. In terms of reservations, there's two reservations that you have to do. First is the Lake Magog campground and the second one is a car pass and that's required if you're parking your car at the helicopter um, launch pad or at the trailhead. So either of those, you need a car pass. Although to be honest, I don't think anybody checks, so you might be able to get away with that. No guarantees though. Uh, there's also the Big Springs or Marvel Lake campground uh, reservation. And that's if you're planning to split your hike in into two days. That is through the Banff server. Um, which is different from the Lake Magog campground. There's different uh, starting times of when you can book, so just make sure you read that very carefully. And lastly, there's the helicopter booking. Guys, don't take the helicopter up. We had some relatively unfit people on our trip and they did it in one day. So I guarantee you can do it in two days. Go do the research yourself if you're going to take the helicopter up, go away. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I don't know, people might be lazy or they have some sort of medical condition or they have kids or whatever. That's totally fine with me. Uh, it's $190 per person and one way, $190, one way, and you can take a maximum of 40 pounds up. They say it's quote unquote due to COVID, but really it's in the money, man. They charge an extra like $4 per pound if you go over that um, limit. Okay, what facilities are there? There is a lot of outhouses and they're relatively clean. They're stocked with toilet paper, so you may not need to bring that up, but I would just bring a little just in case. There is tables. There are wooden planks for you to set up your tent on so you don't have to sleep on like rocks and bumps and stuff. Uh, there's also running water, that's, that's a huge one. And it's fed, I believe, by underground wells. So sometimes they may dry up, which it did in our case. In that situation, you just go to the creek, grab some water, no big deal. There's also a nice little red shelter uh, where you can hide from the rain. There's tables there. You can cook you can play games and yeah Our group pretty much just lived in that shelter for the five days uh, There's also a Sydney Boyne Lodge and they have tea parties every once so often uh, There's cake. There's wine. There's beer just in case you didn't bring enough food up Although I have to say the cake and stuff is pretty expensive. It's like seven dollars for two chunks of banana bread but as marie antoinette said let them eat cake <laughs>